everybody. Good morning. Back for day 17 of 40. Praying uh, through the seven spheres. So, uh, I can't see my title here of the video, but I think it's, is your heart loyal to God? Um, I came up with that based on reading a devotional and then heading back to Psalm 78. Yesterday, I read Psalm 78 and just kind of spoke about some things that jumped out to me. Um, if you haven't been here before, this is just 40 days of getting before God, alright? Which really, um, this should just continue on and on. Maybe it will. I, I don't know. I have, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Okay. But, yeah. So, the seven spheres is just, like, all the different parts of our life that we can pray about. And that's the beautiful thing is God is not only for Sundays. God is not only for church. And um, God is not only if you have a problem and you need a genie in a bottle to come and help you when you're in trouble. Uh, which is interesting because I definitely have friends that are like, oh, I don't believe in God. Or, oh, I don't know what I believe. Or, oh, I'm a spiritual person. Um, but then they'll be like, will you pray for me when, when something when something bad is happening to them? You know, I've had that happen many, many times. And it's like, of course I will pray for you because it worked. But you can also pray. Like, God is, you know, like, why was it? would it matter if I prayed versus if you prayed? Like, believe in God, not in, you know, a person. Just the person of Christ. But anyways, yeah, we're just here. We're just here getting into the Word, getting into some devotionals, getting into some some hymns possibly well that happened a couple times <clears throat> and also reading through the em bounds complete works of em bounds on prayer book which has been amazing um but anyway i'll just start off by praying and then talk a little bit about today about being loyal to god all right lord i just thank you so much that even when we're not loyal to you, you still show up and provide, but you are only so long-suffering and so patient, and you are a good father, and discipline is part of your regiment to get us to change, because you don't want us to stay the same, and you, you want our hearts to be softened and to be transformed, and you want us to trust you, and so thank you so much that um, you gave us your word and you showed us yourself on those pages and I just pray that they would come alive today, that we would see something new about you, that, uh, you're going to do a new thing today. So thank you so much for newness of life and just excited to be here. In Jesus name. Amen. Yes, I really am excited guys to be here today. Just in general, like, existing. I, I'm just feeling something happening today. Like, something's moving in the spirit. And, I don't know. I, I think part of it is the season. Just as January is approaching, the new year. And all the new things that are going to come in 2024 that, that have never come before because each day is different each day is a new day that God created for us and today is not going to look anything like yesterday like yes we're going to eat and we're going to go to work and we're going to clean and some of those things but it's not going to look the same it's like snowflakes they always are different so I love that and I'm just excited to see what this year is going to bring but I hope it's filled with trusting in God that's kind of the theme today about your heart being loyal to God is the same as as it's the same as trusting him and I've painted a picture uh one other day about thinking about someone 
that you really trust like you you would just assign a task to that person and know in your heart of hearts that they're going to get that task done and that you don't have to worry about it and that is the kind of trust that we have to have in God but we don't so often we really don't and so I was reading today out of the God is faithful devotional by David Wilkerson a great one I should probably put it in the comments uh, so you can get yourself a copy it has a devotional for every day of the year so I just turned today to December 29th and this is cool because it's called God is able to see you through and it really ties into the Psalm 78 reading from yesterday so I'm gonna kind of parallel the two so just key points um, do you believe God is able to see you through do you believe he can do all that is necessary to answer your prayers and meet your needs? Jesus said to two blind men who begged him for mercy and healing, do you believe I am able to do this? So two blind men are coming before the Lord, begging him for healing. And Jesus says to them, do you believe I'm able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. This is in Matthew 9. Jesus then touched their eyes, and immediately they were opened. Whew. And then the Lord, it's, it continues to say, The Lord asks all of us, Do you believe I am able to guide you and perform my perfect will in your life? Or do you harbor secret thoughts that I have forsaken you and let you down? That stood out to me in reference to the Psalm 78 from yesterday, where basically the Israelites are putting God to the test and speaking against God and saying, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out and streams flowed abundantly, but can he also give us bread? Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just embarrassing, really. It just really is embarrassing to think like that God is not able to do something because he can do whatever he wants but a lot of the time he needs us to have the faith in order for him to complete it so it's a battle in ourselves that we need to come to terms with before God and surrender our will and our old way of thinking that's the old man that died with Christ and the new man is now here the new creation uh embracing the truth about God and the truth about what our life is now it's trusting in God it's surrendering to God it's doing things through this power and through the spirit of God that we were not able to do before um that would have been impossible it's only possible with God and so you know it comes down to, again, being all in with God or all out, but not being somewhere in between where you're like, yeah, I believe in God. And like, yeah, saying one thing with your mouth and believing another with your heart. So is your heart loyal to God? And I made a couple of notes because I was reading back through Psalm 78, just trying to see more here. And in the first few verses... You know, it says, my people, and this is talking to you, it's talking to me, okay? My people, hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. So the next generation would know them. And then they would tell their children. And then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. Basically... When you're, if you're a parent, okay, and you're looking down at your child, 
and they need to say sorry to somebody for something they did their sibling probably okay or another child or you or your husband or wife whatever and they're like sorry <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be like you're not really sorry like in your heart of hearts you're not you're just saying that because I told you to but you don't believe it your heart is not loyal to your your words and your spirit is not faithful to to to, to be obedient and to, to be changed right so if we're able to see like the heart of the matter coming through in someone's words how much more is god able to see our heart and our spirit as we go about our lives like he knows when we if we trust him or not like <laughs> he cannot be fooled okay anyway i just thought that was so good because we've got to be all in guys we don't want to be like our ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, disloyal, unfaithful. And yet, we know that the battle is every single day, right? So we always have a choice to choose to live in the new life and walk with the new man, the new creation. Or there's the battle of sin and the flesh that is always pulling us to do to sin and to fall back into the old ways and just do the same old thing that we were doing before that doesn't bring life and so it's it's a daily fight but we've got to focus on the fact that we have the power of Christ in us to ignite us and enable us to be able to walk in the spirit there are always going to be things, as long as we're on this earth, in this body, okay, that we're going to be struggling with and wrestling with, um, with God, you know, as far concerning trusting him, because we've all had mountaintops and valleys and life is easier some days and harder other days. And there's lessons that we have to learn. And then when we learn them, we're like, yes, like, that's it. You know, like, I, I made it. I'm I'm good. Until, like, a day later and then there's something else. Or a minute later, you know. Or sometimes you have a great season. You're just, like, killing it. Just riding smooth in the spirit. Just walking in the spirit. Like, things are going really well for a while. But we know that life is in seasons. And we know that what you know the word said is true that we 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 are being made like him slowly and the sanctification process is painstakingly long uh in our finite minds however the eternal perspective says our life is but a blank our life is but a vapor or a mist that just disappears because of how short it is in lieu of, you know, like, eternity. <coughs> Excuse me. But, anyways, that's basically what I wanted to, to touch on today. Just to, you know, get the knobs turning about is your heart loyal to God? And how God can see whether it is or not. So good to be honest with yourself. And then if it's not, we go to God in prayer. So that's where we're going to go now. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. So... Bow your heads with me. <clears throat> Lord, I'm going to read this verse again. It says, We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, and then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Father, when we hear of a person doing something great, honorable, commendable, respectable, we remember, we remember, but we forget all of the things that you have done and continue to do, and we are so short-sighted, God. Expand our vision, 
lift up our our heads, lift up our eyes, widen our lens of what we're able to see and focus our minds on you. Those who stay their minds on you have perfect peace, Lord, and that's where we need to be. We need to be focused. We need laser focus with no distractions. Imagine, Lord, help me imagine if we were all just focused on you, on the king, seeking first the kingdom of righteousness. Truly, 100% with all of our heart, that our hearts would actually be loyal in seeking you first. Help me imagine, Lord, what that would be like so that all the other things in our life really would just come into place as a result it's like it's just magnetic it it's like the force of just the magnetic fields when we draw ourselves to you all the other things in our life come along with it and they just meld into the perfect order that they're supposed to be in in terms of importance in terms of priorities what you want us to do first, what you want us to focus on, what you do not want us to focus on anymore. All of this becomes clear when we are walking with you. And you know this, Lord. You designed us in this way, and that is why you tell us to seek you first. That's why you tell us to keep our minds fixed on you. That's why you tell us to remember your deeds and to remember what you have done. Because you are all that we need you are our sufficiency and we are only satisfied when we are loyal to you when we're not loyal to you we're not satisfied we're we're like the israelites grumbling complaining always wanting something more we're not content we don't have that contentedness to be in whatever situation whether we have a lot or a little just being content and being at peace, whether there's sickness or death, we can still trust in you. And as a result of that trust, we have that peace. And we know that you really do have everything under control. Lord, it's hard to understand. We get so distracted. We get so emotional. We just get so fixed on ourselves and how we feel. It's not bad to have feelings, it's not bad to grieve, but we've got to have that underlying trust and that underlying loyalty to you and that we wouldn't doubt you and turn away and say, oh, can God even do this? Can God even spread a table in the wilderness? Can he even provide for me and my family? Can he even heal that person? Not that you always do, Lord. Not the way that we expect people to be healed, but you do other types of healings. You do the more important ones. Like the man on the mat when you said, my son, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees got mad at that, but then you said, how much easier is it to say your sins are forgiven than to say, get up and pick up your mat and walk home. Sometimes you heal us spiritually, other times you heal us physically, sometimes you do both. It's in your wisdom, your infinite wisdom, Lord. Help us to remember who we are and how small we are, that we really are like dust. And that you really have all of the knowledge and all of the wisdom. We don't believe that, God. Forgive us, we do not believe how intelligent you are. I mean, it's, I can't even say the word. It's not the right one to describe you intelligent. That's, you're just so far beyond that. It's the only thing I can do is just praise you. If I'm trying to explain and tell the next generation about you and how amazing you are, 
all I can do is praise you and say, look around at everything he created. How everything in the universe is in such perfect order with day and night, seasons, the rain, the sun, the flowers, the circle of life, the cycle of life. It's incredible, God. But we just miss it. We, we really miss it. We just get so caught up in insignificant things. And we just worry and get anxious. And usually it's about little things that are not going to matter the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. And we look back and have wasted time and we wasted energy. It's because we haven't trusted. So I'm asking you, God, to make our hearts loyal to you, that we would be in your service, that we would be dedicated to you, that we would be people ready to act when you speak, that we would be people always listening for your voice. We need your help with this, God. We need you to rein us in like a shepherd with a shepherd's hook to bring us back, to call us, to train us more. We need more training. And we know that your word is useful for training and teaching. So, Father, help us get in the word. Give us the hunger and the desire for righteousness. Call us unto yourself that we would pant for you like a deer pants for water. We would just be crazy about you. Lord, the most important relationship in our, in our life would be you. That we wouldn't just say it with our lips and not mean it in our heart. It's, it's so off-putting to think how you know. <laughs> how you know when somebody means something or not. Why waste the words? Why waste the space in the air with lies, hypocrisy? I speak against these behaviors in Jesus' name, that people would be honest. Honest. That we would be honest with ourselves, God. But that's where we need your help. Change us. Build us up to be people worthy of I mean, we're not, we're not worthy, but you make us worthy, Lord. You make us worthy and you make us fit to be used. So bring us into your plans, just bigger things that we can't imagine of doing that are just so fulfilling, so big and powerful to know that we could be a part of the things that you're doing. Get us out of our heads, those little boxes of torment most of the time when we get stuck there and depressed anxious just so worried and we're just drawn away from the important things and that laser focus is on something just not of you so point us to you draw us near you hold us close to you and don't let us go until we really let go of all of these things we're holding on to and not giving to you and trusting you to change and to use. Make our hearts loyal, O oh Lord. Only you can do it. Change us, transform us in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! All right. Yes. Okay. Guys, he's the only one who can do it, all right? God is the only one who can do it. But reading better stuff and listening to better stuff helps. <laughs> so think twice before you turn on some crappy TV show or some just crappy movie that you're embarrassed to let certain people know that you're watching, you know, or just awful music that, what's it doing to your soul, you know? Because I think of our souls as a plant to be taken care of. Now, I'm not the best hanger of plants, for real. I, 
I got some black fin black thumbs <laughs> over here, black fingers. <laughs> but um, I know that like we have to feed ourselves good stuff. So if you're always feeling just dark, you know, and spiritually, like ask yourself, what are you filling yourself with? Truly, be careful who you're hanging out with. All right, I'm here to. I'm here to challenge and remind and encourage us both, okay? Spend time with people that are going to challenge you to be better, to make better decisions. If you're going to dark places that don't bring life, why? Why? It's not even that fun. Like, <laughs> it just leaves you feeling gross. <laughs> so... That's all I got. I'm 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 gonna cut this off. I need I I got life to live. You got life to live, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Please leave a comment, thumbs up, whatever. Let me know you're here. Okay. Bye.